What you're looking at here is an optimized deployment of Llama 3 8B on Base 10. And the tool that I use to optimize it is something called TensorRT LLM. That's a model optimization framework from NVIDIA. And the way it works is you basically build this engine that takes model weights and a bunch of configuration and spits out a optimized, you know, compiled model serving, model influence server that is going to have really low latency and really high throughput. And so I have this active, it's running on an H100. We can actually go take a look over here and give it a try. It's going to give us a nice fast time to first token, nice high tokens per second. So how do we build one of these? How do we take a large language model and get a high performance inference server? Well, in the past, we've had to do this manually. And that's been a process where you grab a GPU, you've got to install a bunch of stuff on it, wait around for everything to build, wait around for everything to run, and then you have to export this and you have to you know, port it over to this production server. And not only that, you have to make sure you're doing all of that in an identical environment to where you're going to serve the model eventually, because these servers aren't portable, which means if you're doing Llama 3 on an H100 in production, you've got to do exactly the same thing when you're building it. So what we've gone ahead and done is built a engine builder. And what that does is automatically creates this TensorRT engine as part of the deployment process. And if I scroll way up in the logs here, you're gonna to start to see uh, where this happens. So basically, you're able to write a configuration locally, and then when you push your model to base 10, it's going to create this GPU user build job, and it's going to install everything you need. It's going to build it and deploy it automatically. So you're able to go seamlessly from, okay, I need to build this high performance engine to, okay, you know, scroll, 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 scroll. Now I am serving it in production. I'm able to handle requests live. I'm able to add on things like auto scaling and that kind of stuff. So how do you actually build this? It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to walk you through it here. So we're going to go back to our um, code environment and I'm going to walk you through step by step. So first we're going to create a new truss, truss init, uh, you know, uh, I'm just adding a little Y at the start there so it shows so I can find it in my in my sidebar. Um, I'm gonna call it llama three. All right, cool. So yeah, so this uh, this truss I just created has got a couple things in it. So it's got this config and it's got this model. So this is the sort of model serving code. And actually, we don't need this at all. Um, so. Everything that we do is going to be in the uh, model server. You can actually modify this if you'd like um, to add some more customization to this model. But for this demo, we're just going to do a off the shelf server. And so we're actually going to go ahead and remove this file uh, to prevent any issues. So we don't need this. All we need is this configuration file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over the docs real quick. I'm going to copy this Llama 3 config. And I'm going to put it in here. Um, just make sure it doesn't, you know, copy itself. Um, I'm going to give it a unique name. So what is in here? We've got the model name. We have the resources that we need. So in this case, we're running on an H100 GPU. Um, we have this Hugging Face Access token. So this is something you've got to set ahead of time. Um, basically, if I show you here in my workspace. I have this hugging face access token secret. And the reason that we need this is because Llama 3 is a gated model on a hugging face. So if we actually go to hugging face really quick, um, see how it's this gated model here. So basically you have to accept the terms and conditions of the model. And then, you know, we take the API key so that we know that you have. So anyway, you just got to set that really quick. Instructions for that are in the documentation. Um, in terms of the actual build config, the thing we care about here. So there's a few important um, there's a few important things to set every time. You want the base model, so this is going to be some kind of llama model. If you have a fine tuned model, if you're doing seventy B, four or five B, any of that sort of stuff, it's all going to be based on this. 
and you you know specify the repository it's from hugging face you can also bring it in from cloud storage from a custom link wherever you want we can set a batch size so the uh the larger your batch size the more users you're going to be able to support the lower your effective cost per million tokens is going to be but it's going to be a little slower so if you want the maximum performance like at all costs you're generally going to want a smaller batch size so 32 is a nice mid-range batch size for an h100 for an 8b model you're going to need to set the input and output length. Um, you know, if if you know that these are going to be shorter, make them shorter because there's going to be actually optimized CUDA kernels for every different input and output length size. And so if you know that you're working with really short data or maybe you're generating really short responses, setting this smaller is going to juice that performance just a little bit more. Um, this whole engine builder will quantize the model for you during deployment. So if you're doing post-training quantization to say like FP8, in 8 any of these things, it can be weights only, it can be weights and KV cache, it's going to handle all of that for you automatically. So yeah, so you basically just set up this configuration with all of the details for your specific model, and then you run trust push, and I'm going to give it a couple flags, publish, trusted, so that it can use the secrets. I'm going to deploy it to base 10. It's going to automatically set some other metadata for me when I do that. Um, but yeah, so we're able to go into the base 10 account. Um, and we are going to see this new engine being built. So yeah, when it's done, um, you're going to have this sort of setup. You can copy your model ID, bring it into your inference code and paste it in here. Everything else should be the same. Put in whatever prompt you want, you know, how awesome is TensorRT LLM? I have no idea if it's gonna be able to give a decent response to that. I don't know if it's in the training data. Um, ah, yeah, looks like TensorRT LLM is pretty awesome. Um, so, yeah, that's the Tensor RT LLM engine builder on Base 10. That's a quick walkthrough of how to use it. Um, just, you know, make a truss, make the config, get rid of the model.py, ship it to production, just works. So definitely let me know if you have any questions. Um, there's documentation on all of this stuff, uh, but we've had a ton of fun working on this, building this. It saved us a ton of time as we're building and deploying models. So definitely let us know um, if there's anything we can do to expand the engine builder to make it fit your use case, help you get models in production, get, the, get that latency down, get that throughput up. Thanks for watching.